Welcome to St. Columba's. I look forward to worshiping with you. We've really entered a new season these days with more of us venturing out, leaving home, traveling further and further afield. And many I know are also thinking anew about their priorities, their relationships, and how they want to spend their time and their energy. It prompts me to consider how the Holy Spirit is moving among us, prompting, beckoning. Nicodemus is one of my absolute favorite characters in the Bible, a person asking questions in the presence of God. We'll hear his story today. We'll offer prayers of love for those in need and those on our hearts. We'll give thanks for those who served this nation We'll pray for justice and peace, and we'll sing our songs of praise. At St. Columbus, whoever you are, wherever you find yourself on the journey of faith, you are welcome. Let's begin now with glorious music and lift our hearts to God. Come, Holy Spirit, make, make all, all things, things new. new. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. 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 The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given to us your servants grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of your divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith and worship and bring us at last to see you in your one and eternal glory. O oh, Father, who with the Son and the Holy Spirit live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Holy Gospel of our Savior Jesus Christ, according to John. 
glory to you, Lord Christ. There was a Pharisee named Nicodemus, a leader of the Jews. He came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do apart from the presence of God. Jesus answered him, Very truly, I tell you, no one can see the kingdom of God without being born from above. Nicodemus said to him, How can anyone be born after having grown old? Can one enter a second time into the mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Very truly, I tell you, no one can enter the kingdom of God without being born of water and spirit. What is born of the flesh is flesh, and what is born of the spirit is spirit. Do not be astonished that I said to you, you must be born from above. The wind blows where it chooses, and you hear the sound of it, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the spirit. Nicodemus said to him, how can these things be? Jesus answered him, Are you a teacher of Israel, and yet you do not understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know and testify to what we have seen, yet you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you about earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you about heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except the one who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but may have eternal life. Indeed, God did not send the Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please pray with me. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Stir up our hearts and draw us forth to your love. Amen. Do you suppose Nicodemus had any idea what he would see or hear when he came out into the darkness to find Jesus? It's no accident that he came. No casual stroll. He planned this and came looking. I suspect he really had no choice, but could he know where this encounter would lead? I suggest to you that in this passage, we see a person on the brink of a major transition in his life. I suggest to you also that the threshold for transition in our own lives is always very close at hand. And finally, I suggest to you that transition the letting go of the known and moving into the unknown arises through the incoming of the Holy Spirit. It's a delicious detail that this meeting took place when it was dark. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night. I know, he was a religious leader. So this was a risky undertaking. It could mar his fine reputation. That's why he sought Jesus at night. But things are different when it is dark. It's different to go out and meet someone at night. Something unexpected, unseen, sometimes happens. Shadows are different. Things which were visible become invisible, and that which was invisible may suddenly become startlingly clear. Now John, who is reporting this story, does not understand salvation as something way out beyond. 
Salvation is right here, next to us, now, each moment, both mundane and sacred. Salvation is ever within reach, yet because of the shadows, the light and dark, the distractions and the busy blindness of our lives, it's difficult to see, to live into. What prompts one of us to undertake a major change? Something within? Something beyond? Sometimes premeditated, sometimes accidental. Many people I know are doing some major reassessing of their lives right now. Their priorities, their relationships, how they use their time. In a recent survey, 83% of CEOs said they want to see their employees back in the office. Only 10% of the employees are eager to return. I can't wait to see how that plays out. Well, something inspired Nicodemus to come out and search. He speaks of signs that Jesus had done, signs that suggest to him a teacher come from God. Something he felt or heard or saw gave him pause. Who knows, he may have been quite content when this rabbi Jesus happened through town. He probably resisted his initial desire to meet with such a troublemaker. Yet, oh, there was something too alluring, compelling, that drew him out to seek he knew not what. And this is the pull, the irresistible attraction of grace, the yearning, both of discontent and of desire, the high hope of adventure, the search, the bewilderment, the proximity. So Nicodemus is a person with questions in the presence of God. And Nicodemus' story, that's my story and yours. What's drawing you forth along this way today? We may experience God in three ways, as the sacred beyond us, creator, giver of life, eternal judge. We may experience God as the sacred among us, in one another, as Christ, through compassion, mercy, healing, and as the sacred within us, as longing, searching, resting. This is the essence of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, affirms that the mystery beyond, among, and within are, are part of the same movement, something of a, a holy conversation, a, a holy dance. While the journey of faith is unique for each person, those who have gone before have observed common landmarks, recognizable patterns. One such pattern is the recognition that the spiritual path is not a linear progression with beginning, middle, and end. Rather, the way is circular. We come back around to places where we've been before, we do not go through a season of doubt just once, or a season of seeking and exploration, nor do we go through seasons of great attentiveness and faithfulness just once. Rather, we come into these places, are there for a time, move on, and may find ourselves returning years or even decades later. Those who journey in faith recognize truth in the words from T.S. Eliot's poem, Little Gidding, we shall not cease from exploration, and the end of all our exploring will be to arrive where we started and know the place for the first time. I see this circuitous pattern in my own life, with times when I have felt too confined, things seemed too predictable, orderly, that I'm simply going through the paces, 
giving rise to a need to bust out and leave the familiar, seek the unknown, followed in due season by a deep sense that it's time to return home, to put things back in order. This is consistent with one of the other hallmarks in the journey, that we're drawn quite paradoxically in two directions. For there are times when it feels important for us to know for sure, to apprehend. We want to know that God loves us, to know what is the right so that we may do the right. We want to know the path. Just give me the directions so that we can follow it. Yet at other times, we're drawn toward the unknown and the unknowable. For it's the mystery of God, the mystery of love, which is full of richness, promise, and allure. We want to give ourselves wholly, fully to be subsumed in this holiness of life. Many years ago, when I was in transition from one chapter to the next, a friend mentioned that she had a gift for reading tarot cards. Now, I was looking everywhere and anywhere for insight, so I had my fortune read. I don't remember most of it, but I remember that by some calculation using my birth date, two cards in the deck were assigned as my cards. These were the Emperor and the Fool. As you might imagine, the Emperor sits resplendent and wise in power on a throne. The Fool, on the other hand, is depicted as a young lad wandering with eyes on the sky and stars above, not noticing that he's about to step off the edge of a precipice that leads who knows where. Major transitions, new configurations in our relationships, quests of spiritual exploring, all evoke this sense of being both emperor and fool. Some part of us knows deeply, truly, while some other part is ready just to leap. On the edge of newness, I might do as Nicodemus did, sneak out in the dark of night to ask questions of one who seems to know. We may not understand what we hear. Be born anew? How can a man be born when he's old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb? The encounter does not conclude with evident clarity. He's left wondering, how can this be? Yet Nicodemus is ready, receptive. Jesus affirms the wind is blowing in a new direction and it has caught you up. You shall be born anew. Flesh begets flesh, says Christ. Stay where you are, and you will surely produce more of the same, perpetuate the same. Therefore, live not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, and you will be blown to new places. So, is it time? Time to take a step? Respond to the beckoning? To sneak away in the dead of night to seek a sage or the sageliness of the depths of your own soul? You may already sense what it is you must do to free yourself once again of those inevitable trappings of the flesh born of our anxiety and neediness, to receive freely the winds of the Spirit. The wind blows where it chooses. You hear the sound of it. You know not where it comes from nor where it goes. But it is the Spirit of God. Thus we are called. Thus we are sent. Thus let us live. Amen.
God of heaven and earth, we pray for one another, for our families and friends through whom we learn to love and to be loved. Give us grace to serve Christ by serving our neighbors and our community, loving others as Jesus loves us. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We pray for your church throughout the world, thanking you for all who serve Christ and his kingdom. We pray especially for all our Sunday morning worship leaders and for a period of discernment as they bring their ministries back to life this summer in the courtyard. By your Spirit, strengthen your people for their work and witness in the world. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. We remember with gratitude your many gifts to us. Help us and people everywhere to share with justice and peace the resources of the earth. We are grateful today for all those Americans who ventured much for the liberties our country enjoys and for all the righteous warriors who will continue to press for a society where those liberties are shared with equity and justice. For the baptisms of Aldenali McVicker, Alexander McVicker, and Elliot Siebel and for those blessings we name now, either silently or aloud. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! Give courage and hope to all those striving to dismantle racism wherever it may be found. Comfort and heal those in sorrow, need, sickness, or any other trouble. And bless those who minister to them. We pray especially for the legislative efforts in passing the George Floyd Justice in Policing Act. For Glenn Skaggs, Tom Nelson, Sue Walters, Abby Endicott, Marianne Lavon, Linda Yangus, Marion Rutch, Marsha Brooks, Anitra and Ania Washington, Pam, Sturgis, Sheila, Sue Womack, Susan Kramer, Taj, Suze Mitchell, Lee Putch, Sally, Joe Bob, Justine Hedgepeth, Colton, Mary Pat Jones, Yuri, and Michael Lucinian. For those who are in hospice care and for those we name now, either silently or aloud. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! We remember with thanksgiving all who have died in Christ, and we rejoice at the faithful witness of your saints in every age, praying that we may enter with them into the unending joy of your heavenly kingdom. We pray especially for John Bennett, Bob Yangus, Larry Harris, Virginia Lynn Dwinell, Richard Thomas, and for those we name now either silently or aloud. Alleluia! Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia! O Lord our God, accept the fervent prayers of your people. In the multitude of your mercies, look with compassion upon us and all who turn to you for help. 
For you are gracious, O lover of souls, and to you we give glory, blessed Trinity, three in one. Amen. As our Savior Christ has taught us, we now say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread, Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The peace of Christ be always with you. Also with you. Peace be 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 with you. It is a great joy to welcome you on this Trinity Sunday and Memorial Day weekend. St. Columbus is a church on a mission to live God's love. We are eager to connect with you and help you take your next step toward life with Christ. We're glad to worship with you online, and beginning next Sunday with our celebration of Columba Day, we'll offer Courtyard Church in person at St. Columba's in the courtyard every Sunday with a special We Worship service for our youngest parishioners and their families. To learn more about these and other opportunities for prayer, fellowship, service, and more, or to make your gift of thanks, visit us at columba.org. My deep thanks to each of you for your continuing generosity and support of the mission and ministry of St. Columba's. The world needs the love we share as the body of Christ. May God, the Holy Trinity, make you strong in faith and love, defend you on every side, and guide you in truth and peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.